pleasure. Good morning, everybody. This is, uh, if you read the instructions <clears throat> in the handout, uh, we're supposed to be guiding our comments today to younger folks. And so that's what I am going to do in putting together these uh, comments. Right click or? Uh, I have nothing to disclose. Uh, I'm not married to Lady Gaga as well. So you're junior faculty, or you're starting out, or you're about to move into your first job after your fellowship or residency, and you're very excited, you're successful, you're happy, you've achieved attending status, uh, you have finally gotten a salary hike, uh, you now walk around the hospital, you, you, know, you get respect, uh, yeah, you, you call home your parents, you say, I have a real job, and you, you do matter. And even better, remember, you're talented, you're sought after, you're admired, and yes, you are ambitious. Wow. <laughs> so what's next? How do you advance? Well, you have to realize you work for a company. In that company, there is a myriad of expectations, regulations, oversights, and seemingly the daily reminders of them. You have entered the balancing act of academia and professional life. You see what's happening to other people around you, remote from you, etc., and you wonder, wow, Regina has been promoted, your former fellow resident, but why not me? I'm trying so hard. What if I fail? I need some help and I need to get it quick. Why is getting promoted important? Well, for an academic, it's logical career advancement. It's satisfying. It's empowering. People notice you. They ask you to give lectures. They ask you to serve on committees, etc. They ask you to help lead. Perhaps more importantly, in your academic community, whether that's the international community known as SAGES, or whether that's the community known as your medical school. It allows you, as you're promoted, to indicate your own faculty development and your alignment to the core missions of an academic medical center. We certainly all know the medical education, research, and clinical care are those core missions, but once you become the triple threat, you are usually rewarded by additional administrative duties. Key concept number one in all about thinking about getting promoted is the concept of mutual value. Promotion, while it may seem to bring up horrible memories of semi-permeable membranes back in medical school, which you struggled or not to understand, it's really not that way. The best medical schools and the rising medical schools are very much interested in promoting their faculty. It makes sense. People graduate from their careers. You want to have strength, talent, innovation, capacity coming up, and you want those people aligned to grow the strength of your medical school, or your practice plan, or your hospital. So the concept of a mutual value, it's good for you, well, it's good for your school and your academic community as well. Key concept number two is my concluding slide where I'm going to make a recommendation to you of how you can go through all of these things with the simple PCE rule. And don't forget, it's important to get promoted. As a reminder, you are ambitious. So setting the stage, deep breath, relax. We can do this. But we must prepare. Notice it's we. There are people who are around to help you, whether it's your division chief, your chair, your significant other, the secretary in the Office of Faculty Affairs. People want to help you, if you're willing to help yourself. Navigating the pathway can be very difficult. But most of the time, when it's difficult, it's your own fault because there's a lot of things out there that can make it easier for you. And yes, you actually do have some control. 
As you set your stage, look beyond it, look further ahead. What is best for me? What's best for my department? What's best for my academic community? And from day one, as you take that first job with Dr. Richards, make sure it says in your plan, I'm going to commit to a regular review process. And that should be at least annually with your chair, but certainly more frequently with your division or section chief, and certainly much more frequently with yourself. These are some essential things to understand when it comes to the concepts of promotion, uh, and less so tenure, we'll not talk too much about tenure, but uh, certainly about promotion. And they're shown here, and I'm gonna say a few things about each of them individually in terms of general overview to the process. In terms of institutional culture and mission, you have a responsibility, if you're going to succeed, to become aware and knowledgeable and observant of what's going on around you. One size does not fit all in academia. You are working at, and you will succeed or not, at your playing field, not at my playing field if we don't work together. It'll be according to your university's playbook, not according to my university's playbook. You should utilize all available resources, and there are plenty for you. It's, again, your own fault if you don't do it. You should learn the rules, the regulations, the guidelines, and the expectations. And I think it's very important to make an effort to understand your institutional history, its legacy, understand its personality, and what it's really all about. In terms of ranks, tracks, and title, the only reason we have these is for really two things. First is hierarchy. There's an inherent hierarchy that we're all accustomed to in academic medicine. But more than that, reward. You are rewarded for your achievements as you go through a process of promotion. If you look down here in the bottom, you'll see some of the types of names that we have for the different tracks at a medical school, academic clinical research, academic educator, research track, tenure track. As you prepare and look towards a plan towards promotion and faculty development, you want to just really understand exactly what is it that I do. Am I in the lab 90% of my time and see one morning session of papers once, of patients once a month? then you're probably not an academic clinical track surgeon, et cetera. You want to stress primary and secondary elements for excellence and service. And more and more medical schools, certainly my medical school, in the process for promotion, these are critical things that have to go into the overall mix and come out and be evaluated. Terms of appointment, tenure. The common words are contracts term sheets? Are they renewable? How often do they become renewed? And you have to understand the criteria for dismissal. Practical advice? Not a bad time to pay an attorney to look at a faculty contract as you're heading into a new job. Contracts are oftentimes one year. Your attorney will look at this and they'll most often say, well, they're not going to change this in your practice plan, but uh, it, it looks like there are a few areas that you might ask for additional stipulations or clarifications. And that's a good review. They're not going to rewrite a separate contract for most places for a single person. Typically, they're one-year terms, especially for junior faculty. Uh, but these can be very highly uh, variable. Uh, be careful about nebulous terms, uh, et cetera. Now, now, tenure is an entirely different topic, and there's a changing landscape in American medical schools for tenure currently. Uh, some don't offer tenure at all whatsoever. Uh, a lot of faculty uh, have really no clue what tenure means, uh, or what it constitutes, or what it provides, or what it ensures. You know, tenure goes back to the Middle Ages when it was used as a model to preserve academic freedom and certainly at prestigious undergraduate programs and graduate school programs, it allows the tenured sec secure faculty member 
the academic freedom to perhaps take that extra different stand, to offer that more compelling course, uh, to think outside the box. But again, it's, it's really more for senior people, uh, and I think a little bit otherwise outside the realm of today's talk. Timing and readiness. You have been doing your annual and biannual review with your mentors and chiefs. But nonetheless, there are still general guidelines at most medical schools for the time spent at each faculty level. At the majority of um, medical schools, you enter uh, for whatever period of time at the instructor level, and then uh, at variable points of time, just progress through to the assistant professor of surgery uh, level. Sometimes there are exceptions, such as fast tracking, where you have really a special talent, and that person is firing on all cylinders and making meaningful contributions and achievements, and warrants and deserves the reward of a fast tracking to a higher promotion level at a medical school. Also, and perhaps more commonly, you have the career stall. And this is where the assistant professor forever is comfortable in his or her job, uh, is doing a ton of clinical work, uh, has pretty much decided I can make my income, uh, have no requirements for scholarship, uh, do a pretty good job teaching, etc. It's your career, commit to be focused and be active throughout the process. The institutional process and decision making, the promotion and tenure committee is asked to make an acceptment of your at work and your community. Learn about all of the guidelines that are available. You're going to have to provide nominations for letters, personal statements within your curriculum vitae, and it's your, it's your chance to identify and summarize your best work. Now, I mentioned control. The control you have in the promotion process is meticulous preparation. You have to make everything as easy as possible for those nominating you, the Office of Faculty Affairs, and especially the P&T Committee. Make sure everything is provided on time, that it's authentic, succinct, and verifiable. You should attend workshops that are available as you come through your early years. You should communicate with the OFA staff. They want to help you. You must meticulously prepare, update, and nap with your CV. You must follow the rules because when it gets to the P&T Committee, they're not going to be interested in trying to find out a teaching uh, accomplishment and have to thumb through it. They want to know exactly where to look. Maximize your CV. Identify your niche. State your teaching philosophy. Look at other successful CVs of colleagues in your department. So I was cruising around the web and I found this picture and I went to the faculty development page at Cornell and you can see here, it's a very nice thing where they have a first year uh, faculty member comes in and after annual review of the first year, uh, they're doing pretty well. And so the question becomes, hey, why don't you go next Thursday to the Let's, Let's Move Up seminar for third year faculty members? And then they said, wow, I like that. I might actually be able to do this. And they went to the CV preparation seminar. And the bottom line is, as you go through this, there are a number of things available to you, and you should take advantage of them. And so it's decision day. You've now heard from the P&T committee. And two scenarios emerge. Yes, you're promoted. Be proud, relieved, celebrate, but reflect what's next. How do I prepare for my next set of career goals? Because I, I can promise you, if you work for me, that's the first question I'm going to ask you. The other story is, sorry, not just yet, not this time. That does not mean failure. Reflect on the reasons why. Seek counseling. If it's fixable, remediate it and try it again. And if it's not fixable, move on. The PCE rule. Build your relationship with your community. Build it, foster, and cover it. You will succeed if you participate, work to contribute, and then enrich your community. Thank you.